Hello everyone. Welcome to another video. Here we are going to see hypocycloid which is generated by means of two circles, one of which is large and stationary and another circle is small and rolling on the interior of stationary circle. The stationary circle is called as directing circle and rolling circle is called as generating circle. It is defined as the hypocycloid is a curve traced by a point on the circumference of the generating circle which is rolling on the interior of the directing circle. This curve is similar to epicycloid which we have already seen that epicycloid is traced by a point on the circumference of the generating circle which is rolling on the exterior of the directing circle. So in this video I am going to show you how to draw a hypocycloid. This is Arjun and let's make it simple. Similar to the epicycloid, we are considering one rotation of generating circle. But here it is on the interior of directing circle. In one rotation, generating circle moves a distance of pi d or 2 pi r, where r is the radius of generating circle. Here also we have to calculate the angle of displacement which is in the form of a sector. The sector angle has the same formula of epicycloid that is theta equal to small r by capital R into 360 degree where small r is the generating circle radius and capital R is the directing circle radius. The formula is derived from the sector equation that is length of arc equal to product of radius of the arc and angle of sector. Here AB equal to 2 pi r since uh, it is the distance covered by the generating circle in one rotation. So 2 pi r equal to capital R into theta. So theta equal to 2 pi into small r by capital R. 2 pi is in radians while converting into degree we will get 360 degree so theta equal to 360 into small r by capital R so this formula is mainly used in epicycloid and hypocycloid to determine the sector angle here we are going to see a question based on hypocycloid as you can see a circle of diameter 50 mm rolls along the inside of another circle of diameter 180 mm without slipping. Draw the path traced by a point on the smaller circle. So here a small circle is rolling along the inside of another large circle. So that means this is definitely a hypocycloid. From the question we have to determine whether it is based on uh, cycloid or epicycloid or hypocycloid or involute. Here in the hypocycloid there is a set of procedure to draw the curve. First step is to draw the directing circle. So directing circle here is having the larger diameter which is here 180 mm. So we can draw a circle of 180 mm diameter first. Next we have to draw the uh, generating circle inside this directing circle. Generating circle is having an internal contact with the directing circle. So we have to draw the generating circle inside this directing circle. So that here we have to draw a straight line first connecting the center of the circle here with any angle and the distance of this line should be equal to the difference in a radius of two circles. That is we have uh, directing circle radius of 90 mm and generating circle radius of 25 mm. So difference is uh, 65 mm like this. So this line is drawn with any angle 
and the distance of this particular line should be the difference of radius of two circles. Here it is 65 mm. Now the next step is we have to draw generating circle which is having center at this particular point here and the generating circle is having the radius of 25 mm. Next step is we have to find out the sector angle. Sector angle can be determined by using the formula small r by capital R into 360. So, here it is 25 by 90 into 360 which is equal to 100. So, we have to draw a line connecting this center here with an included angle of 100 degree. Then we will get a figure like this. So, after that we need only the upper portion of this drawing. So, we can erase the lower portion of the directing circle. Now, the next step is we have to divide the uh, generating circle here into 12 equal parts. It is similar to the epicycloid. So, here I got a figure like this. Here points uh, on the circumference of the circle like 1, 2, 3 up to 12 in clockwise direction. Next step is we have to draw arcs with uh, center O which connects the different points on the circumference of the circle like So, we will get a figure like this. Here the arc passing through the center of the circle is called the central axis arc. So, it is here marked in different color. Next we can divide the sector angle. Here the sector angle is 100. So, we can divide the sector angle into 12 equal parts. So, 100 by 12 gives about 8.33 degree. So, we will get a figure like this. Now, these lines which divides the angle of the sector into 12 equal parts intersects the central arc at these points. So, these points can be marked as different centers. Next like in the epicycloid we can connect arc from center C1 with the radius of 25 mm which is the radius of the generating circle. This arc should be intersecting the uh, arc passing through points 11, 1 here. Next we have to uh, draw an arc with the center C2 with the same radius of 25 mm which is the radius of the generating circle and this arc should be intersecting the arc passing through points 10 and 2. Similarly, we have to draw an arc with the center C3 with the same radius of 25 mm which connects the arc passing through 9 and 3. Likewise we have to draw arc with the centers C4, C5, C6 up to C12 uh, with the same radius of 25 mm uh, which intersects different arcs passing through the circumference of the generating circle.
finally we can connect these different intersection points to get the required hypocycloid so this is the required hypocycloid now the final step is we have to draw the required tangent and normal for that we have to mark a point on the hypocycloid so with this point p we have to draw an arc having a radius 25 mm which is the radius of the generating circle this arc should be intersecting the central axis arc here next final step is we have to draw a straight line connecting this intersection point here with the center of the sector o now finally we can extend this particular line here now we have to connect the intersection point of arc and line here at this point with the point p this particular line drawn here is called the normal so if you draw a line perpendicular to the normal you will get the required tangent this is how we can draw hypocycloid with a tangent and normal hope you understand the concept Thank you and let's catch up in another video.